Okay. Um, so today, um, just we're going to quickly talk a little bit about Ultra and, and sort of what motivated the change. Uh, and then we're going to dive right into the Ultra course view. Um, we'll talk first about accessing your course, uh, create, and we'll talk about how to create content, uh, assessments, assignments, things like that. Um, we'll talk about grading workflows in the gradebook, and hopefully we'll have time for some communication features uh, and your questions. Um, but first, um, I'm going to type in one more poll question, so give me just a second. So oh, I would like to know um, what your experience level is with Ultra, if you know anything about it. Um, if you know nothing, that's fine. If you maybe have heard a few things, great. Or if you've actually seen it, uh, just to kind of get an idea of where you guys are at. Okay, it looks like most people don't know a whole lot about it. So that's awesome. You are in the right spot. Congratulations, you've made it. Um, today, we are going to be talking all about Ultra. Okay, so starting out, um, first off, most of you, I'm sure, have seen the uh, Ultra base navigation. Um, that's this thing on the side. Everybody hits that when you log on. Um, and that is sort of, everybody has that. So if just because you see this, that doesn't necessarily mean you're in Ultra. Um, Ultra refers to the course view, and right now we have two different course views. We have the original and the new Ultra. Um, the original has been around for 10 plus years, uh, and now we're kind of phasing into this Ultra. Um, the reason for that is because Ultra is designed to be more responsive on mobile devices. You're able to um, log in from anywhere. Uh, on any device, be it your phone, your tablet, uh, or your computer, and you should get essentially the same experience. Um, and uh, you know, they they sort of they modernize the whole um, user experience, I guess is a way to put it. Um, and so it doesn't allow you to nest things as deeply. Some of the features have changed, um, and but one of the reasons you know for the change is to make it better for the people who are uh, accessing it through a mobile device. So really any, you know, anywhere you can get access to the internet, you can access your ultra courses uh, from any device and you should have essentially the same experience. Um, but today we'll, we'll hit some of the highlights um, and talk about some of the differences. Okay, so uh, first off, I want to talk just a, a bit about the base navigation. Um, as I said, everybody hits this when you log in. You've probably already seen it, but you may not have noticed we have a new um, assist tab. Um, this is something that connects uh, you to a variety of campus resources. Um, this is where you can go for students can go to get tutoring assistance, they can go to career services from here. Um, there's student, other types of student help. You can um, also access a lot of different campus services from this tab. So just wanted to point it out um, and let you know that it's there. So. But, oh yes, Bobette, you had a question? Yeah, my burning question is, as I'm starting a course and new with, you know, I've spoken to you, new with Ultra, is, are the students familiar with the Ultra? Does that change the student view? Um, yes, it, like okay. what you see, what you are seeing is what the students are seeing essentially. Mm -hmm. um, so, so they're yes, all in say. Ultra? If they ask uh, questions. No, no, it right. is, oh, I see, I'm sorry, I'm misunderstanding. Um, Currently, instructors have a choice. So you can still choose which course view you use. Um, mm -hmm. 
your course will automatically start in the original course view if you want to use ultra or if you want to use ultra courses and stuff you have to convert or convert to ultra but um it's up to the instructor so each student will have you know whatever course view the instructor has chosen for that course does that is right. that answer yes and so i'm just wondering if they're going to have questions for me about ultra you know if it's different if they've always been in the original will they i'll just tell um, them to yeah i they may um you can point them to the the um web page we have that right. uh, helps Will students do. and they they can go to the service desk but ultra has been around for a couple of years now so some yeah. of the students may be familiar with it already okay i'll direct them to you if they if need be well actually send them to the service desk that's the best the place service. for students to go starting with it service desk yep okay will do Sure. Good question. Yep. All right. So um, anyway, we're going to start off with accessing your course. Um, so uh, on the base navigation to get to your list of courses, you're going to click the courses tab here. Um, you have two views you can switch between. Um, and you do that by clicking this little icon in the upper left um, to either switch from list or tile view. Uh, the list view does have this added bonus of sort of this color coding where um, ultra courses will have a colored bar next to them and original courses will have a gray bar. Um, but honestly, it's just sort of a preference. So, you know, it's, it's up to you. And this is something that's, you know, personal to you. So you can switch between views. Um, and then to access your course, you're either going to click one of the courses on the list or one of the tiles um, and that will open you into this new ultra course view now um, there have been a few changes that if you've looked at ultra before there have been a few changes this summer one is that they um, moved some of the navigation icons um, which are now in the upper left hand corner um, and they're no longer icons they're just text um, and we'll, you, we'll use these up here to navigate to the different areas of the course. Um, we're mostly today probably going to focus on the content and the gradebook areas. Um, okay. But we'll try to hit as much as we can. Um, the other thing you need to be aware of, especially in this content area, is the details and action section right here. Um, You've got a, a number of things you can do to your content from this area. Um, you can view your groups. This is where you can go to set up and uh, access your collaborate sessions. Um, this is where your attendance tool is and also where you can create announcements, which we will talk more about later. Um, and then another thing that, that has changed is student preview used to be down here at the bottom of the details and actions, but now it has moved up into the upper right hand corner. And that is um, all you have to do is come up here and click to go to student preview. Bobette, did you have another question? No. Okay, good. I just, I saw the thing up. I didn't, I forgot to clear it. So thank okay. you. Okay, you're welcome. All right, so, um, but building our course, um, which is, where essentially all of our course content is going to be displayed um, there are a few things to note um, before we start building our course because this is the area where our course content is going to be displayed um, but first up is this uh, see here. the ellipsis uh, sometimes we call that the kebab um, that's used um, to do two important things one is batch edit um, that is where you can uh, remove items change dates um, but you can do them like several items at a time so you don't have to do it one by one um, and also this is one, an area where you can come to copy content so if you want to copy stuff from another course to your ultra course this is one place you can go to do it 
Um, there's always more than one way to do things in Ultra. So uh, the other way to add content, and this is the one you'll probably use the most of, is this uh, plus icon right here. And uh, this bad boy is, you'll see this in several different places in Ultra. Sometimes you'll get different choices, um, but it's always uh, an icon that when you click it, um, you'll get some choices to help you add items to your uh, content or your assessments. Um, and we'll talk a lot about this today. Um, but as I said, this, this plus icon shows up in many places and it's really, it's how you add everything. Um, so if you click that plus icon, um, you get these choices here. Uh, the ones we're gonna be really looking at today, um, as, as I said, um, Sometimes you'll copy content in, you could do that in the ellipse as well. Um, this content market, that is um, where you go to add third party content and connect to um, say like textbooks and things like that. Um, but a lot of what you're doing here is under the create tab. And when you click that, um, that will open this create item panel where you can uh, create several different items. Okay, so uh, the first thing I want to talk about, and we're going to talk just really about these top three here. Um, but first, I want to talk about a learning module. Uh, the learning module is um, just a container. Uh, one of the changes in Ultra is that uh, nesting is only allowed to go two levels deep. So you can either nest a folder inside a learning module or a folder inside a folder, um, but that's as deep as you can go. Um, and they do not allow you to put learning modules inside of learning modules. Um, <clears throat> but to create a learning module is pretty easy. You're just going to click. You're going to open that uh, create item panel. You're going to click learning module and it's going to create your learning module. Now, to, the learning module, as I said, is just a container. So if you want to add items to the learning module, um, all you have to do is click this uh, down arrow here. And I've got kind of a close up here. And what that does is that opens this learning module and you can see kind of this gray and it's sometimes kind of hard to differentiate, but it's got this gray box around the learning module. And you can see this time when I've scrolled over the plus icon, it's actually inside this module. So that's kind of how you know when, then when you click one of these choices, your items are actually going into the module. Um, you can add a description here and you can change the name of your learning module just by scrolling over this. Um, and what that does is that'll bring up a pencil icon. And if you click that, that will allow you to edit the name. Okay. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is the folder. And this time, now you can see I've got this learning module here. This time when I'm scrolling over the plus icon, and it's lighting up purple. Um, you'll see this time this is outside of the module. So that tells me that whatever item I'm going to put here um, is going to be outside this module and in my content area in general. Um, this time, uh, as I said, when I open the create item panel, I'm going to click on folder. Um, this is, again, it really works almost the same as a learning module. We'll talk about some of the differences and there are very few um, in a moment. But um, when I click that, um, this time I will get this panel that slides out that allows me to rename it, add a description. Um, but in order for that folder to be permanent, I'm going to have to click the save at the bottom. Um, you can do it without naming any of this stuff. It'll just save it for you. Um, but it's a good idea to get in the habit of naming your folders when you create them just to avoid confusion down the road. Um, but once you've saved it, then just like a module, you can click this button or this down arrow to add content. Um, when I click that, um, I do get a little different view this time. Um, this time it gives me all my choices, but it's essentially under this folder here, but it gives you the same thing. Anything you click here now will automatically be added to that folder. 
Now you can um, also, if you have items that are outside modules or folders, you can simply drag them into folders and modules to move that content into different spots if you want. Um, you can drag it back out again. Um, but it's a good idea, I think, to try to get in the habit of when you're building courses and creating content to put it where you want it because sometimes the drag and drop can be a little touchy. It does take a little time to get used to. All right. So now, um, once, you know, we talked a little bit about creating folders and modules, now we're going to talk about documents. And documents, that's the third choice on our list. Um, and a document in Ultra is not like a Word document, okay? Really, a document in Ultra, I think it's better to think of it maybe as a stripped down uh, web page because, um, you know, it's, it's not just a simple text document. You can add videos, web links, um, and other multimedia to create, you know, more dynamic and engaging materials for your students. Um, but uh, to create a document, um, what you can do is you'll, again, open this create item panel by clicking the plus icon, uh, click document this time. And now you'll have this um, document canvas that opens up and you can see I've called this ultra document, um, but you can call it whatever you want. Um, <clears throat> and to start adding content to it, I'm going to click the add content button. When I do that, I'm going to get this text editor. Now, this looks like a normal text editor, and let me uh, let me move in a little closer here, zoom in so you can see it a little better. Um, it looks like a normal text editor, right? It's got um, your font adjustments, and you can adjust, uh, you can create headers and titles and things like that. Um, you know, you can bold, italic, and underline all that stuff. Um, also has this undo button, which is great. Okay, but really, if you look at these three icons here off to the right, um, those are really where you're going to add a lot of your um, richness to your document. Okay, you can just go with plain text in, you can put plain text in there, type in instructions for your students, uh, or descriptions, things like that, explain items. Um, but those other items here like this one you can use to insert a link so you could link to some outside uh, web content or perhaps uh, some sort of you know learning game um, you can attach files and these are mostly um, you're attaching them from your computer but you can get them from anywhere um, but you can attach images as well um, and then this other again this plus icon that's our friend um, you're gonna see that um, you can attach all kinds of different content. This is where you would go to open the math formula editor. Um, you can again, attach images from here. You can um, attach YouTube videos and also um, you can attach your content market items. So if you've got third party content or uh, perhaps you wanna attach a Kaltura video, something like that. So really when you create these documents, you can you can add quite a bit of uh, multimedia to them. So they're not simple dry text. You know, students can read a little, um, watch a video, read some more. You can, you know, attach them, you know, send them to an outside website. Um, so they're really, they're more than just plain text documents. And when you create one, uh, I just, this is just a quick one I created, um, but you can see where here I've attached uh, an extra reading file. I've got some explanation of the water cycle and then um, just a picture attached. This is just kind of a stripped down little version. Oh, I bet you had a question. Good, I was just about yeah. to ask if anybody had a question. Yes, um, I always seem to have trouble getting pictures in there, even if I have into a, you know, a message or, and so forth. So did you, mm -hmm. what did you click to get that, the water cycle picture in with the text? Um, well, what I did was I clicked this um, plus sign here and plus I attached okay. an image. Okay. 
So if I have stuff in Kaltura, is Kaltura still available in Ultra? Yes, again, that you're gonna go here, but uh, this time you're gonna click, um, one, one of the choices that you'll get is LTI item, and that's how you'll attach Kaltura videos. Oh, I never knew what, okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it, if, if you have, if you're trying to get this stuff set up and you're having problems, um, call CITL and set up an appointment to talk with one of us or send us an email, we can send you some instructions and get you pointed down the right path. Great. I'll be calling probably later today. So <laughs> no problem. Before That's starting, I'm going to release it on Friday at midnight. So I, I want it checked out. I want to go through some things and probably um, have you Good. check it out to make sure he's ready to go. Yep. So I'd, thank you. We'd be happy to. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. um, oh, and one thing I forgot to mention um, is that uh, these uh, items, when you create items, they default to hidden from students. So um, any uh, that allows you then to create and sort of build as the course is happening without really worrying about uh, students accidentally seeing something they shouldn't see. Um, but that is, it's important to remember um, that that is happening and that um, you will then need to uh, make sure that the, you know, the content is available to students. Um, actually, that has changed a little bit and I wanna show, I'm gonna do this real quick here. Um, yeah, here we go, I'm gonna share. Okay, I hope, can everybody see this? This is my uh, courses page. Um, if I go into my ultra course, And you see, I've got these things hidden. And if you click on these, you'll see um, I'll have to turn it into visible. Now, they've added these release conditions or they've improved them. Um, and this is the big difference between the module and the folder is that um, if you look at the release conditions for the module, um, you can release a module to specific people or groups. Um, which you can also do with a folder. You can release it based on the date and time or uh, based on a student's performance on something else. But uh, unique to the module is the ability to re release content in sequence. Um, if you check that, what that does is then uh, a student will have to go through your module content in the order you've selected. Um, and you know they'll have to go to each six item in succession. So they'll have to for instance, view the first item before the second item will be released. Now, does that mean necessarily that they're going to study it as much as you would want them to? No, not necessarily, but it does sort of um, force this sort of sequential viewing of the content. Um, that oh, is not, great. yeah, that is not available in the folder. You'll see here um, they don't have the sequence thing. So that's really the biggest difference. Um, the other thing too is that when it comes copy time, if you copy a learning module, um, it does not allow you to pull pieces out of that module. It will only copy it as a full unit, whereas the folder you can copy pieces out of if you want to. Not a big deal if you want to copy a specific piece out of your module, just drag it out of the module and copy it. Um, but anyway, any more questions before I move on? Okay, so let me go back to where we were. Um, we're gonna talk now about creating assessments. Um, let me get to the proper slide here. Give me just one second. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> So when we go to create an assessment, and I'm just gonna talk about assessments, or, or excuse me, creating an assignment. They have their assignments and tests, okay? They're really, the creation tool is essentially the same. You just have some different options when it comes to your settings that are, uh, you know, based on the fact that it's either a test or an assignment. Um, but really creation, 
the creating them both is really the same. Um, again, you'll go to this create item panel, uh, except this time you'll go down to the assessments here and I'm gonna start with assignment. But like I said, if you know how to create an assignment, you can create a test because they're really done the same. Um, <clears throat> but when you click that, uh, what that does then is that opens this assignment canvas. Um, and again, you'll see our friend, the plus icon. If we click over here, um, you'll see it opens up a new menu. Um, this time, because this is an assignment, it has a bunch of uh, question types that we can uh, click on and use those to build questions, which I'm gonna talk about in a second. Um, and you'll see those if you click on it, if you're creating a test as well, you'll get those same options. Um, but what I wanna talk about, right, or and the other thing too, is that you have this settings panel over here. Now this is because we're creating an assignment, it says assignment settings, but if it was a test we were creating, it would say test settings. Um, and we'll talk more about those in just a second as well. But what I really wanna focus on for a moment um, is this add text feature, because um, just like your content um, in your assignment, you have this same text editor. So you can again, create assignments that link to outside websites. Um, you can attach videos to them that students can watch. Um, so you can really, again, you use this text editor and you'll see this in a lot of places. Um, so you can create more than simple just directions, you know, open these links. They can have it right in front of the students. Works the same on tests, the same thing. Um, and actually this test, text editor also shows up in questions. So when you create a question and you go to add text to it, you can again add a video for students to watch. You can link to outside content. Um, you can insert files, things like that. So that's, it's really flexible. You can do quite a bit with it. Uh, finally, because I don't wanna take up all of the time today, let's talk a little bit about the settings. Um, when you click on either the gear icon or one of those links um, back there in the settings, let's take a look, one of these links here, see, oops, one of these links over here, um, that will open your assignment settings. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but this actually, um, I scrolled down. So this is the top half of the assignment settings. And then over here is the bottom half. Um, but you can do, uh, this is where you basically set up your assignment. This is where you set up all the particulars, how many points it's worth, whether it's worth any points, you know, what category it's in, how many times you're gonna allow people to try it. Um, but they do have some nifty, um, little features in ultra that are worth noting. One is this allow class conversations. So if you click this, that automatically sets up a dedicated discussion area for people to ask questions about this assignment. So instead of like an original work, you would say have to create a discussion area that was just questions on assignments um, and keep monitoring that. Now you can just set set it up that it's dedicated to this um, assignment itself. So all you have to do really is check the assignment to see if anybody has any questions on it. Um, another nifty feature is this collect submissions offline. Um, that's nice because let's say you're creating a, some, let's say a in-class or an online presentation, um, they might not necessarily be turning something in, but what that does is by, um, so by clicking that, if they're not actually turning anything in online, um, what you can do then, what that does is that automatically creates a grade column that's attached to the assignment, but it doesn't require the students to turn anything online. Um, you can grade from there. Whoops. Um, if you see on the other side here, there are some um, other, you know, much used items. This is where you can attach rubrics and you can also um, create um, rubrics in your grade book, which I'm sure Mike will talk about in a moment. Um, but this is where you can add other things, right? Like security codes and you can create groups and assign it to the group, things like that. Um, but do remember that you always have to click that little save button at the bottom, otherwise nothing will be saved. So I went through that fairly quickly. Um, I'm going to pause again to see if there are any questions before I hand off to Mike to talk about grading. 
Are well, there any questions? I have a question. Yeah. Sure, go for it. When you allow class conversations, is that how does that work then? If you click that box, then what what happens? Um, there will be like a little discussion area. Um, I, how can I describe this? When students click on the assignment, they there will be a little um, bubble there that indicates right. that there's this discussion area. So you just click that and it's it's like a, a regular discussion area where then you can type, you can ask a question. Okay, so it's typing, it's not where they can see each other and talk or they, they just type. Um, actually, I th you know what, I think, boy, I'm, maybe Mike will remember. Um, yeah, I believe, I, I believe the students can, can start a collaborate session out of the, yep. there as well. Okay. All right, thank you. So yeah, and they you, for sure can when you allow it for like group work that automatically sets okay. all that stuff up. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Great. Yeah, sure. there's a few different ways to think about that. You could just use that if you have a complex assignment where you know students are just going to be asking a lot of, a lot of like questions. It might be nice to have the conversation because if you answer it for one student, uh, you don't have to answer. You know. A, 10 times or whatever if, as people are asking. Right. Um, but yeah, it could mm -hmm. also be used to make the assignment a little more interactive for the students so that they can kind of work together on it, even though right. they're turning it in an individual assignment at the end. They, but it gives mm -hmm. them a chance to maybe like share resources or or uh, ask each other questions about how they're you know approaching the assignment. So. OK, great. Thank you. All right, well, I'm going to hand it over to Mike to take you through grading. All right, so, um, yeah, just a, a little uh, plug for our department. Uh, obviously, today's workshop is kind of a big, you know, overview, so we're not going too deep in any of these subjects. Keep, keep an eye out for our workshops throughout the semester because we'll be having more uh, detailed workshops on things like grading and rubrics and setting up assessments and things like that so so yeah um it, and of course if you have any questions you can always contact us directly uh, to set up a consultation or or have a quick conversation with someone on the team all right so yeah grading a uh, very important part of your online course getting this stuff sit, sorted out is really important um so the in ultra it's called the grade book it used to be called the Grade Center. Um, slight difference in the name, but there there are a different layout now for uh, the way you can view the grade book. So if you look right here on this slide, you'll see that the grade book looks like a list of items. So that's what I call the list view. I'm not sure if Blackboard has an official name, but I've, I've always called it the list view. It lists all of your assignments. And, uh, pretty much in the order you created them. And then you can look at, at the second column, it has the due date for those assignments. It also shows you the status. So if students start taking it, you'll start to see that you might have items to grade, or it'll show you how many, if, if all the items are graded, it'll say completed. So this is the student view. This shows you a um, more detailed uh, view of what the students, each student is is doing in the grade center. So you'll see here that this this class only had had three uh, three users in it, but it shows the overall grade there toward the towards the uh, the right side, and uh, also it shows the last time the, stu the student accessed access the uh, system here so and also it gives the um the username if you need need to contact the student by their aid but that's really just information and you also see there is the kebab here over are the three dots over on the far right and this gives you some more options to um, check on that student okay so that then the other view is more like a spreadsheet view. Um, if you see this this switch uh, here at the top, these two buttons let you go between the list view and the uh, the, the spreadsheet view. 
So this spreadsheet view is much more like the current Blackboard uh, view where you have uh, rows and columns of each assignment and, and then the students. And you can toggle between the two. So sometimes it's I find it's a lot easier to find an assignment in the list view if you're trying to find something because uh, uh, it's just a list and you can scroll through it fairly quickly and you don't have to try to scroll uh, horizontally through through this. Okay. Okay. So. Okay. So this is this is this slide is an example of an assignment. So I'm going to take a quick stop. I want to share my screen with you real quickly so I can show you a, an example gradebook and look at a couple. Uh, of these things in a little more detail. So just give me one moment to switch over to sharing my screen. I'm going to pull up my uh, test course here. Just going to take a moment. Almost got it. This should be right. Okay, so once this loads up, I'm going to double check, but you should be seeing my Blackboard core. Okay. So I need to jump out of this. This is and go into a course. So I'll kind of reiterate what I was saying in the last few slides as I as I move through this. So I'm clicking into an ultra course, and we come in, and uh, so if you want to go to the gradebook, it's listed here at the top. Click on gradebook. And then you'll see uh, the list view. I'm pretty sure that's the default. Every time I click into the gradebook, it goes to this list view first. So like I said, you have your list of assignments here. And then if you want to look at the, uh, at the spreadsheet view, you click over on the grid. And it will show you the breakdown of the students here and all the assignments. OK, so one thing that's really important and you'll have to do this. You're going to want your gradebook to be lined up with your syllabus. So that's really important so that your gradebook actually is working in your, you know, helping you calculate the grades and, and displaying the grades to the students correctly. Um, so there's a couple ways to do this. Um, I'm going to start with the looking at this overall grade here. You'll see this, but this uh, button here at the top of the grade center. And you can click on this, and I'm going to edit my overall grade. So the calculation details are going to come up for your overall grade. And this is where you need to make a few decisions about how you're going to calculate your grade. Um, so if you look over here, there is basically um, basically a couple ways you can calculate your grade. You can use gradebook item weights or grade category weights. So in this case, we're using gradebook item weights. So what that does is it lists every single item, every, and items are essentially every single test, assignment, anything that's a grade, gradable and graded, uh, graded item in your course. And you can set the weight per item. So as you can see here, it's broken down. Everything's about 3 or 4%. And when you get to the bottom, you'll see that it totals 100%. I also have a few items in here that are 0% because they're not uh, calculated as part of the grade. They're just extra assignments that aren't part of the total grade. So you can do that. And you can also click on this uh, this little uh, circle with the line through it, the, the no smoking sign or whatever. That's what I always think of. Um, this will exempt that item from the grade center. Um, it's essentially the same as having 0%, but it's a little more um, definitive, and you can see it um, maybe easier when you're looking through the list. So if you go if you go this route, let me show you too. If, if I change this to 4%, you're going to see that the total turns red, and it says 101, because you need this to be 100% for it to be accurate. So you'd have to go in and correct the numbers till you get 100%. Um, and then, of course, once you do that, you can click save, and that will save uh, save it. So th that's a fairly straightforward way of setting up your gradebook, because each item, you just need to calculate 
what percentage of the total grade it, it is and put that in here. Um, if you have lots of similar types of assignments, you may want to switch over to grade category weights. So I'm going to click on that. And what you'll see now is that all of the categories I've created in the, for grading are listed here, um, listed here on the left. So I'm going to go back and talk a little bit about categories after I show you the overview here, just to explain how you get these categories in your uh, setup. But in this case, we'll, the way this course is set up, there's one final exam. So if you click in here, you'll see that there's one final exam. It's worth 13% of the overall grade. Uh, I have uh, some extra credit assignments. This this one's good. Um, 11 assignments. So I have these 11 different assignments. And the way this works is that no matter what the total points on, on these assignments are, they're going to be uh, you know total together. And that is going to also be 13% of the total grade. So this is this is how you would set it up if you're used to using category weights uh, for grading. Uh, so I, you know, you can just follow this down. I have also have tests. So there's 12 items in the 12 different tests. I can see them, and they're also 13%. So same story. You want this to be 100%. Sounds like somebody had a question, or maybe they raised their hand. Go ahead. Or maybe yeah, someone left. Oh. oh, yes, I have a question. Sure. So regarding the categories in the grade book, like final exam and aristocratic, so do we have to create it or are they automatically created? Yeah, so I'm going to, I'm just about to show that. So yes, there are some default categories that exist. And then there are, you can create your own custom category names. So let me, let me show oh, you how that works. Um, so if you remember back just a moment ago when Mike was showing you how to create an assignment, uh, so I'm going to get back to the main content page of my course here, and we're going to create. We're going to create. Um, I want to show you this in two different ways because it's. I think the way that this is set up uh, is isn't is a little confusing the first time you see it. Uh, but if, once you know what's going on, it's not it's not tricky. So I'm going to create a new assessment, essentially. So I'm clicking on the Create button. And when I come over here, when you create a new assessment, you have two options, test and assignment. So I'm going to do a test. Mike did an assignment. And you may have noticed something, but it was kind of quick, so you may not have seen it. But this is where, if you look in this the test settings, it says grading category test. And if you had created an assignment, it would have said grading category assignment. Um, but let's say I actually am creating a quiz that I consider to be a different category than a test. I would still start by clicking on the test category because you only have two choices, quiz, or I'm sorry, you only have two choices, test and assignment. And then I would click on this gear icon and I would come in here and you can see all of the, the available grade categories. So it's it's set to test. I want it to be a quiz. So I switch this over to quiz. It really doesn't change anything about the assignment building tool or the assessment building tool. It just changes the grading category to quiz. OK, so that's, that's how you would do that. Um, and then I'm going to show you one more step to this, because this is only showing the categories that currently exist in my course. Um, I'm going to show you how to add uh, new categories, and that's back in the gradebook. So I'm going to save this, though, and you'll see that now that I've saved it, it changed the grade category to quiz. So one thing to keep in mind, if you are going to use categories, you're going to have to double check each time you create a new assessment that it's in the correct category, because um, obviously if you have, let's say, a discussion group label as a quiz, it's going to... Um, it's going to mess up your grade book and you got to go back and like figure out where which one is out of whack. Uh, but it's not so bad because when we were in the grade center, you you could you can see which uh, when you're looking at the category view, uh, you can see which assignments or assessments are listed under each category and you can 
quickly find if there's a one that's in the wrong space. Okay, so so we're back in the grade book, and if we want to do some things with our grade book, there's these the gear icon is is basically the settings icon for everything. So when I click on this uh, icon, I get I get some things coming up here about how to set up the grade book. So after we do categories, we're going to look at the uh, grading schema because that's also really important. But we're looking for categories. So if we come down here, you're going to see a list of categories. So these three here at the top, final exam, field trips, and extra credit, since the icons are plain, these are ones that I created. And the ones that you create, you can also edit and uh, change the name. So if I click edit, it'll let me uh, change the name. And you can also uh, delete them. So uh, you can create, and if you want to create a new, since I don't want to delete it, I'm just going to leave it in the final exam, hit enter here. There, it saved it again. Oh, it's still stuck in that mode. OK, I think you just have to click out. So let's say I want to create a new category. You can add a new category. We'll call this one. Um, I don't know. That's a good category. Um, I'm just going to call it meetings. Let's say you have assigned meeting times for your students. So I created a new category called meetings. Um, the default categories here you cannot get rid of. You don't have to use them, um, but you can't change their names or or erase them. So feel free to use these. They, they cover most of the common types of assessments you're going to have in your course. So you can, you can definitely use these uh, prima categories. But if you have something like I said, a field trip or something, something unique, you create, create a category and then you can add it to that assessment. Any, any further questions on that? I think it's pretty obvious. You'll, you'll have to play around with this a couple of times to find, you know, remember where everything is. If you, and of course, yes, you get it's stuck quite clear now. Thank okay, you so great. much. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, so that's how you create categories. And if you're going to use category weightings, you're going to definitely need to create categories and, and set them to your assignments. The other really important thing you're going to need to set up here is the grade schema for your course. So different departments use different grading schemas. This is just sort of the standard 10%. Uh, Actually, it's not a 10%. We have an 85 here. But um, so let's say. So this is where you set up your your A, B, C, D, and F. Also, some uh, some courses have uh, pluses and minuses. So let's add a C plus. So I clicked on the. I just wanted it here, you know, in this spot. So I found the line where it should go. I want a C plus. So I'm going to call this C plus. And then you'll see that it created another uh, row, and I can adjust where the C plus breakdown is. So let's say, yeah, so so what can be a little tricky is when you're trying to type the grades in here. Uh, what I usually recommend is starting, you can kind of start at the bottom. So you go zero, and then you want the top range. So let's say the top range of F is 69, actually. So if I put 69 there, you're going to, and you have to click uh, save for it to update. And I do want to save it. Um, you'll see that it adjusted the top range of the app to 69 as well. So what the, this might be a little confusing, but just know if a student scores less than 69%, they're going to get an F. If they score higher than 69%, even if it's a fraction above 69, they'll be in the D, the D range. So there's no decimal. Well, there are decimals here, but the, you don't need to worry about the gap in between these numbers. It it works out. Just make sure that the that the uh, lower bound number is correct on each grading category. But yeah, that's and then if you need to uh, get rid of a grade, let's say, oh, we're not using C pluses anymore, you can hover over this and uh, click on the trash can, and it will delete that uh, delete that from the thing. And like I said, you you want to click save. You don't have to click save each time you make a change. You just need to click save at the end. But uh, sometimes when you're doing something that's tedious, it's good to save it on each step. So you don't, in case you make a mistake, you don't have to go back and do it again. I'll save that there. Hey, Mike, I heard a, 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 ding, a ding. Does someone have a question? Yeah. 
Yep. Yes, uh -huh. I did. Okay. It seems like every course I have, there's a different, when I receive a syllabus, there's a different, um, you know, grade value setting. So does the university have, is it the 92 to 100, do they have a standard grading system? Or is it I, really up to the department and the individual instructor? I believe that it's a departmental thing. And, and then okay. if the department doesn't have like a, a fixed grading schema, then it's really up to the instructor to create a fair one. Oh. If you're if you're not sure, I would recommend talking to your uh, your chair or or a colleague in the department if you're new, uh, just so you're not so you so you get a feel for it because I do believe it's a departmental uh, decision. I know some departments have really strict strict grading schemas because students are in these programs and they have to get a certain number of points to like you right. know meet accreditation or cert certification in a, like nursing for example they have a very strict grading system right but yeah i mean curriculum and instruction and i've seen one or two different you know grade schemas so so yeah i'll check with some colleagues and and talk to uh sally blake maybe yeah it's kind of yeah. Clear and, by that. Yeah. yeah and if there's any confusion about how to set it up in blackboard let us know um Okay. But the most important thing is you want this to match the syllabus because, yeah, the, the right. syllabus is kind, kind <laughs> of your and, and it's yeah. easy to forget this because you're so busy building the actual content and stuff. Sometimes these little details <laughs> slip slip through the cracks and you realize, oh, my, I'm grading on the wrong scale. And yeah, then right. students, especially halfway through the course, if somebody's even if their grade doesn't actually change, they see their points change or something. Uh, right. I can send some students into a panic occasionally. Right. So. It's good yeah. to get this set up as soon as possible, and it's right. It's Thank you very much. Perfect. Yeah, no problem. Okay, so we're kind of running up on three o'clock. Um, I'm gonna. I want to really quickly show you some some things about messaging in Ultra that are a little different. And um, you know what? I should have just kept my screen up. It's probably easier to show live version of this so while i'm pulling my screen back up there are essentially uh two major messaging tools in all in blackboard and one is called announcements and the other is message messages so i'll start with announcements i think announcements are a really uh a really smart thing to use in your uh, class because it allows you to keep keep students up to date on what's happening. And also if something unexpected happens, you can use this announcement, announcement tool to warn, warn or, or, or alert students of a change, especially with our current you know, COVID situation, class, class schedules may change it or classes that are being taught uh, online might have, have a change or class in person, of course, might end up going online at some point. So, Having, having this uh, tool in your back pocket is, is a really helpful way to organize your class information. So if you look here on, I just want to double check, make sure we can see this. Okay, yeah. So if you look here under the uh, details and actions menu, you'll see announcements here. And if you click on announcements, it's going to give you um, a page here that shows you all the announcements you've created. Here's my yo announcement. Um, you'll see it's a draft. That means I haven't... Uh, I haven't posted it yet, so that's a nice thing too. You can write your announcements, especially if you have some that are are really obvious. Like one one nice thing you can do in a class, especially if your class is a little less interactive, uh, if you have like an asynchronous online class, you can use a uh, weekly announcement. So like every Monday or every Sunday, yeah. whenever you think you can send out, mm -hmm. uh, hey, welcome to week two. This is what we're going to be talking about this week. This is what I expect you to be doing this week. If you have any, you know, questions feel free to ask. But yeah, it's a nice way to keep a kind of like a, a pace going with your course. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can create an announcement by clicking on the plus sign up here. And you'll see that one of the options for announcements is, so you have two ways. You can create them and save them as drafts, or you can actually schedule the announcement. So if you click on this button down here at the bottom, schedule announcement, so you can pre-assign uh, when this announcement will get set, sent out. 
So if you're writing your announcements, like those weekly announcements I mentioned, you could have them scheduled to go out every Monday morning at like 9 a.m. or something. That way you don't have to remember to log in and click the post button. You can have them. And you can also, if your announcements, you want to hide them, you can also set a time where the announcement becomes uh, invisible at some point. In most cases, you probably won't use that, but you never know. It might be something where uh, keeping the announcements uh, minimal in the, helps. But usually the announcements are nice to have. Students can refer back to them as well uh, if, if it's something that's giving them future information. But yeah, this is, since we don't have much time, I'm not going to belabor this. You basically give it a title, you decide who it's going to, and you put the uh, text or, or media in this box and save it. And like I said, once you save it, it goes, it, it becomes a draft. Uh, and then you can post it here when you're ready to post, um, or you can schedule it and it'll post itself. One thing to keep in mind, the announcements, um, need uh don't work when the class is hidden so they, they they start working once the class becomes available to students and the way the announcements present themselves to students it's going to be a little hard for me to demonstrate this but essentially what happens is when the student comes into the course the uh, a pop-up screen with any new announcements that they haven't seen will come up and they'll need to see that and they can dismiss it and go into the course but it gives them an opportunity to read their new announcements uh, before they go in the course. If they do dismiss, dismiss it because they're in a hurry to get to a test or something and they're not, they don't have time to read the announcements, they can come back and retrieve the announcements um, and read them when they have time. And one other thing, you can, uh, you can uh, send an email copy of this announcement Remind uh, email reminder. Sorry, I clicked on attendance instead of announcements. Okay, and the other tool is the uh, messages tool, and that's up here. Messages are a little uh, more like conversational, I guess, compared to announcements. Although you can have messages set up uh, to just be uh, one way that you can restrict replies. Now, you'll, you'll see my messages aren't showing up because my course is set to private, so I'm going to need to open it up real quick. And while that, while that's loading, so uh, I understand it's 3 o'clock, so if anyone needs to go, I'm going to stick around a little bit after today. If anyone's interested in, uh, and needs to know how to set up a course shell, I, I really recommend that if you're getting into Ultra, especially for the first time, I highly recommend using a course shell. Um, I'm going to do a quick like five minute demo on how to create a course shell as soon as I finish talking about messages. Um, but if you have to go, it's three o'clock, feel free to check out. Um, and uh, please come to our future workshops. And of course, you can always contact us directly. Um, at CIDL, you can, we have a number of ways for you to contact us either through email or phone, phone, or our phone system. So, uh, and then once you get to know us, you'll even have our, probably have our direct email address so you can use that as well. So I get quite a few emails from time to time from, from faculty. Uh, did you have another question, Bobette? Um, no, I just, um, I'll, I'll go ahead and call that number and, um, I think with the announcements, I agree. I was going to say I agree with you because I'm asynchronous. I'm in Florida. And I used, started using the announcements this past spring for a course for everything because it was an undergrad class. And I would even put the rubrics. I would see that they weren't seeing things that were posted in the content folders, the information folder. So I just put these quick reminders. Here's the rubric uses for all your discussions. And they they gave a lot of good feedback on that, that that they everything seemed clear and was clarified. So I yeah just kind of affirming what you said about the announcements. Yeah, I, so. I, that's that's great. I'm glad you're doing that. I think one thing to keep in mind, especially with the asynchronous course, your students have to you know task switch quite a bit. So like every time they right. stop doing one thing and they
come to do this new thing, they kind of got to reset their brain and seeing that announcement with the instructions or a reminder about what they need to do just helps them like organize their thoughts and move forward more efficiently. I think, I think that's a really cool thing. You're right. Doing I, there, so. Yeah. I always want to try to help them as much as possible because a lot of them are working and they have four classes. And so it was pretty much the, like you said, the every Sunday night and it would be there for them on Monday for the week. So great. Great. Okay, so I see we still have a well, thank you four very people much. here. Sure, no problem. Um, it, how about this? Uh, if you'd like to see course shells, can you raise your hand? I, I'll real quick uh, go over course shells because uh, basically, if you're not familiar with a course shell, is it's a way to create a Blackboard course that isn't one you're going to teach out of. It's for you to kind of experiment with, and you can build content in there. You can learn about the the uh, black version process in there and uh if you want to do it i will i can i can do a quick demo so i see there's still three people here if if you want me to do it i'll just show you quickly how to get there i won't go into too much detail today like i said you can always contact us and we can do a consultation and get you up to up and running with the ultra system okay all right so i all i needed was one hand because that's all it takes all right, I'm going to do a real quick. Uh... Oops. Okay. Oh, I think we lost Mike. Um, he's looks like he's reconnecting um but i think i can quickly show you how to um create a shell so i'm going to go ahead and share my screen and we'll do it from there see if mike can make it back in so um give me just a second here All right. I hope, can everybody see this? I hope you can, it looks like you can. Yes. All right, cool. Um, okay, so if you wanna create a shell, you're gonna do that actually from the base navigation menu. So you're gonna come out to here, um, you're gonna click on tools, and then you wanna select Blackboard faculty tools. And here you can see you've got two choices, my courses and my shells, click my shells. And then what you're gonna do, um, and it doesn't allow me to create shells from this account, um, but you will be able to. But all you wanna do then is click request new shell. Yeah, see, it gives me an error. But when you do that, um, what'll happen is, I, and I can't show you because I don't have my other account open yet, um, but what'll happen is um, you'll get uh, a screen with two boxes, one where you add the subject and one where you add the number. Um, it That honestly can be anything because it's just a shell for you. So it really doesn't matter what that is, um, but they do give you those choices just so you can help yourself stay organized. Um, once you've done that, then you just say request shell. Um, and honestly, the shells pop up almost immediately. Um, you do sometimes have to re refresh your page to get it, um, but um then your shells will show up under your courses list and um, you can see what they're differentiated like here right they say shell at the beginning and you can see i've named these i've got all sorts of different names for my shells um so you can call them whatever you want but once you have that shell then and they default to private um and you can open them to check um functionality and stuff and to set up messages and things, um, but shells are not designed to be taught out of. So what they do is every day they will default back to private. So, or they will switch back to private or unavailable to students. So anytime you open a shell, it will close again on you. So if you know, if you're like, why open that? Why is it closed? That's why. Um, and they do that to prevent, um, instructors from teaching out of their shells accidentally instead of teaching out of the course because the shells are not tied to the grade book or anything like that. So if you actually taught a course out of a shell, uh, 
structuring and your grades wouldn't work. Um, but once you have that shell, then um, it'll start in the original course view. Um, and let me see if I've got one here. Here we go. And this is your original course view. And um, because this course is available, I can't convert it. But if I make it unavailable, you'll see this icon. Um, and when you first open your shell, when it it will be an original, but you'll get this pop-up. So you just try the ultra course view. Um, I'm not going to do it now, um, but once it converts, then you accept to finalize the conversion, and you've got yourself an ultra shell. Okay. All right. Any other questions? No. Do you think you can do that? If if you need help or get stuck on something, don't hesitate to give us a call. Um, we can walk you through the process. It's you know, it's a few steps, so it's easy to get messed up along the way, and we're ha happy to help you if you need it. Thank you. Sure. Can. Are there any other questions or does anybody have anything else they would like to know? I just got a message from Mike saying his internet crashed. So Thank that's so why much. he dropped out. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, thanks everybody for um, being here today. We really appreciate it. So 